I have Joey Caputo from the State Bee Inspector here with me today. We're going to do a National Honey Bee Survey. That's correct. Yep. Um, we're going to do that on some of my hives here in the yard. Yes. And uh, Joey's from the Utah Department of Agricultural and Food. That's correct. Yep. Um, tell me a little bit about the survey. What what are they looking for? What are they? What are we going to sample? And um, just how how we're going to go about this? Yeah. So um, it's a it's a nationwide effort. It's funded by USDA, but the states are the ones that actually do the the, the legwork. Um, what we are looking for here are a number of exotic pests that aren't known to be in the U.S. yet. Um, chief among them, the tropolelops mite. Yeah, hopefully we don't see that one. <laughs> hopefully we don't see that. I don't anticipate that we will. But the thing about this is, um, had they been doing this survey, you know, in the 1980s, before we got varroa mite, it's possible we might have found varroa mite and been able to get rid of it before it became such a problem. And so we've learned some things since varroa mite. The idea being, um, you know, if we keep an eye out for things that we know are a problem um, in other countries, that if they do get here, we're that just one step ahead, ahead of the curve a little bit mm -hmm. in addition to that um we uh they will be doing um lab work on nosema disease um uh viruses and then um the survey that you're part of the longitudinal survey actually includes uh pesticide residue testing and so um you'll get a report basically um it tells you you know what your nosema levels are virus levels and then any pesticides that are um, found in in the uh, the wax. Okay, great, perfect. We've I've done this before. Um, yeah, yeah. And uh, the results are interesting, so I'm I'm excited to see what's what hap what we get this time. It's been a couple of years since I've done it, so stuff you can't see with your own eyes. Yeah. So this is stuff you, you can't see. <laughs> you only find with a micro microscope. So that's right. Cool. Well, what are you looking for? Yeah. So basically, we need. Sometimes you can get everything you need on one frame and then other times you need you'll have to grab, you know Maybe a second one, but basically um, What we're looking for is a, a Brood frame that's got open and closed brood Okay And we'll make sure the Queen's not on it because we don't want to send her to Maryland right. <laughs> And then uh, we need a, a little uh, space that doesn't have any honey pollen or brood in it and that's what we'll take the wax sample with and that's okay. that's what they'll do the pesticide testing on we should find something right here <laughs> and um since we're doing the longitudinal survey we are going to want to sample the same hives this fall and so i know she got them numbered so i'll just maybe write down the number is that work for you there's a little bit of open larvae on that side and there's some on this side let's find a queen you tell me if that's enough larvae for you. Oh, yeah, that's plenty. Yeah, that's great. I'll see a queen. She should be marked, so. Okay. There Good you go. Time. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Well, I have the queen right here, so. Oh, excellent. You don't have her. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds good. Okay, I'll give that one back to you. And then if you want to grab that other frame you found that had just the, just wax, the wax, but no. And um, we got a sample of the bees. So we got adult bees and baby bees, and then we're gonna do a wax sample. So we take a nice clean hive tool. We just take a sample of that, and that is what they're gonna test for the pesticides. Perfect. And we'll resample the same hives this fall, and it'll give us an idea of what changes. You know, do we have new pesticides? Do we have new viruses? Do we have new whatever it may be? Have, have they been able to take care of the viruses they do have now? Uh, there we go, right? <laughs> okay. Do you anything else out of that one? That's it. So that's that's number one's done. Okay, I'm not sure this one's got a queen. Do you want to sample? Oh, that okay. One? Yeah, that's fine. Yeah, yeah. It doesn't uh, matter if they're queenless or not. So. Okay. Um, basically, if we just can't find brood, um, uh, we we don't bump it. So. Yeah, I'm not sure this one's got a queen. Let me throw this back down. I got plenty of bees. And they should be making a queen, but they don't act like they're queenless, do they? <laughs> well, what do you want? 
Uh, yeah, that's fine. Yeah, if, if we believe we're queenless, uh, we got no eggs, right? I'm and, not seeing uh, any eggs. Yeah, that's right. So I'll <clears> just mark on that hive that uh, it was queenless, and uh, that's okay. We we'll just take a sample of the bees and uh, get a sample of the wax. Maybe that would be the thing: is let's just get one that's got good wax, uh, good okay. place sample wax, and <clears> uh, just enough bees to take a quarter cup for the alcohol sample and a quarter cup for the live bee sample. See, I've got like. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Queen's just trying to emerge. Oh my goodness! Yep. Or they've been chewed out. Maybe yeah, those maybe have been chewed. Out. Maybe yeah. they're out. Maybe there's already yeah, one. Might, might be. And that might be a worker bee. Yeah. And they're trying to clean the cell. Yep. I think you're right. See if we can open that up. Yeah, that's a, that's a worker bee. Yeah. All right. Well. So there's a queen. There, yeah, yeah. So that does present kind of a, a little bit of a conundrum because you know the virgin queens are harder a, to spot. There's so. a virgin queen running around. Yeah. In here so and, if you don't want to sample this one, that I would totally understand that. No, I'm okay. Because we'll just look extra careful if you want to go forward with it. Let me let me glance here for a second. I'm seeing drones, but I'm not seeing anything that looks like a. Like a virgin queen. Yeah. <clears throat> I think we're good. Okay. Let's uh, we'll do a double check just to let's see. Maybe shake them off there. <clears throat> I kind of like to put them in the bin. It kind of sort out a little bit, and then you can see a little better there too. It does put that up here and see. You and I both look at it. And see anybody that looks like a yeah i don't either i see drones but okay okay yeah i think we're good, I think we're good. <laughs> <clears throat> all right three more right. so how do you like the apple hives i like them yeah um i've never tried them the bees seem to do well in the winter oh, oh with yeah them. yeah i bet because yeah it's like super insulated yeah right? super insulated yeah. they don't they don't um they don't use much resources i mean they really? don't burn through their stores like like a like these other like ones, these huh? other ones these these huh. guys will just burn through them and yeah i was both of these were light going into winter and i was a little worried about them okay yeah they were fine they did just fine they huh? did just fine without i'm like wow. and how about in summer when it gets real hot do they do the uh breathe okay like as far as like yeah they they do they okay. don't I think they're actually internally. I think they they're able to keep the internal temperature more steady. Wow! I think That's they're cooler neat. in the summer and warmer in the winter. Wow! And then do you put like hay bales, you know, around your nope hives? Or you just leave them like this? Just leave them wow. like this. These Apame hives are nicely insulated. I mean, they've got a good inch of insulation on the top. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. So they really don't let out much heat. So these are their their feeders, and they've got vent holes but the bees have propolized them all up. These little things come out, and if you, f if you flip, and flip them around, depends on which way you flip them, <clears throat> then the bees can come up through, the, through here and come oh, down the other yeah. side, and you can fill this section with okay. syrup. Nice. Or you can just um, kind of leave them open and just put a pollen patty right here. Oh, okay. And then they, the yeah. bees don't, I've got these kind of closed off so the bees can't get up into the into these sections. Yeah. But if you just flip those around, then they can get to the syrup. And it's really easy to, you know, refill syrup because you can just pop the lid, fill it back up, throw the lid back on, and the bees are none the wiser. So that's really nice. But you can see they've completely yeah. closed that off. Yeah, that's interesting. They don't, I don't think they like that much ventilation in the hive i think they prefer and if you only want to inspect one half you know you can leave half yeah on yeah you not, don't have to take them you don't have to take off. both off i yeah. have some hive sensors in my hives these are uh brood minder okay temperature sensors great so i have one down here between the other box and the samples all just kind of get mixed together right they do yeah so the one thing about this survey that uh, some folks maybe find uh, t 
to have a shortcoming is just that uh, it doesn't necessarily give you an idea of this a, a picture of an individual hive health. It's more an apiary right. level. And so, um, you know, people will say, oh gosh, I wonder, you which, know, if- Which hive had the- Which one had yeah, the bad, you know- The bad disease, whatever it virus was. Virus levels, yeah. And, uh, you know, it, it isn't uh, quite that specific, but it at least gives you an idea of, you know, what's going on on a, on a bee yard level. What happens if one of these hives die between now and and uh so that's totally fine what we'll do is we'll just sample the closest one to it okay that's alive yeah so okay so no no big deal so yeah. we've got our frame of bees here um we're gonna uh knock the bees off into the tub here and then with the bees not on the comb um gonna do a little bump Take out some larvae there. Um, I don't see that we got enough wax on that one for okay, the wax let's, sample. Let's give you a different one for and, wax. And even though we got all these bees here, we're only gonna take a small number of those. We're just gonna take a quarter cup. And then all those go back. There's some relatively fresh wax. Fresh wax, that's fine. Yeah, yeah, we'll get the fresh wax sample. And so, you know, between the brood bump and the um, the samples we take of bees, you know, we're probably taking, you know, 300 live bees. And then, you know, with the, the larvae that you're losing, it's, you know, probably could be in that range as well. So it's kind of like doing two alcohol washes two might on washes a hive. on a hive yeah that, that's so, uh, what i kind of figure do you have all you need yeah so we got all we need so um i'll show you what we do so we got all of our our baby bees here and we're just gonna put them through this uh cheese cloth try and get some of these adult bees out and get my water here Just gonna dump them into here. So the water goes through and the baby bees stay put here. And then the brood is what where they're gonna look for that trope laylops mite because like varroa mite, it reproduces on bee brood. And then we're gonna put this in an ethanol bottle, bottle of ethanol to preserve it. If it fits. <laughs> <laughs> and then we've got, so that's what they will test for trope layoffs. And then um, these, uh, these we've got in another bottle of ethanol. So the, uh, these are our adult bees. This is what they'll test uh, for Nosema disease. And uh, they'll do a mite count on it as well. And then these ones, uh, we've got live bees here. And so these, we need live bees because this is what they test for viruses. And viruses have to have a living host. They have to have a live bee in order to live. If the bee dies, then the virus dies. So we have to send these live overnight to the University of Maryland Bee Lab, and then um, they receive them, and then they either put them in an ultra low temperature freezer that will preserve the virus, or they'll just test them right away. And, uh, but so that's really important that these get there alive. And these are, um, you'll see it's a man lake box. Uh, they, they ship, uh, ship queens, queens in them. In. So yeah, so that's what we put them in. If somebody has something going on in their hive and they want to send you a sample of bees, what do they? Do? What would they do? Yeah, yeah, good question. So um, we can test for viruses in our lab, but we test for American fowl brood, European fowl brood, um, Nosema disease, and uh, tracheal mite. Now I'll note the last one, tracheal mite, is very rare. Um, we find it almost it, hardly ever. It's been years since we've even found a case. Um, but the brood diseases are more common and nosema disease is more common, especially in spring. Um, if you're concerned about the brood diseases, um, taking a, a swab and uh, swabbing uh, the, the larval 
bees and then um, putting it in an envelope and then sending it to our lab. You can drop it off or mail it in, whatever you prefer. If you're, if you're close by, you can drop it off, but if you're far away, mail it in. And then with, uh, if you're concerned about Nozema disease, um, you basically just need to collect some uh, bees and then put them in, uh, you can put them in a vial like this, um, some adult bees, um, and just put them in some alcohol. You're supposed to drain off that, kind of send them as like pickled bees. You, you put some alcohol in there and then you let them kind of soak there for a minute and then you pour off the alcohol and seal it back up because you're not supposed to send liquids in the mail. Um, and if you don't have something like this, just some, you know, uh, uh, like Rubbermaid, you know, those little disposable, just, you know. Just something. Something that can yeah. seal it. Um, I've even seen people send them in Ziploc Zip, bags. And I, I like was going to say a Ziploc yeah. bag would probably work. Yeah, absolutely. Just make sure you've got a but little bit of alcohol in there because otherwise they'll rot oh, on right. the way, you know, to the, the right. on the journey through the mail. So, <laughs> so yeah, and uh, there's, a, there's a form online that you can fill out uh, to go with that. Um, it's on our website. And um, if you have any questions, of course, just call us, you know. So. Okay. Thank you, Joey, for coming out. <laughs> Thank you.